In this video, I'm going to give, be giving an overview of a nucleophilic addition to uh, the carbonyl group. It's a general overview, and in fact, it's part one of uh, two. Uh, essentially, what we're looking at is, is any molecule that has the, the carbonyl, um, like this, um, and the idea of having a nucleophile, which might be a lone pair of electrons, a negative charge, uh, something which can add to the carbon of the carbonyl, which is more electrophilic because it is less electronegative than oxygen. It's also the position which is favored in terms of the pi antibonding orbital uh, for accepting the nucleophile's electrons, which come from the HOMO. So the antibonding orbital is the LUMO. So this is the, the general scheme. And in this two-part video uh, series, we're going to be looking at both, um, there are four different types of nucleophiles that we're going to look at. Uh, but today, we're going to be looking at, very simplistically, uh, the addition of sodium borohydride, which is actually technically a reduction type reaction. Um, this is the effect of adding an H minus nucleophile. I'm going to put in an inverted comment because there's something important we need to think about with that. And the other one we're going to look at are the Grignard reagents um, with something which is like RMGBR. Uh, we look at that. These both of these are irreversible reactions in the carbonyl group, and so uh, they kind of fit in together. Whereas the other two nucleophiles that we're going to look at are uh, are not. So we'll do them separately. Okay. So starting with sodium borohydride, uh, sodium borohydride is uh, an inorganic salt which is very good at reducing um, uh, typically uh, what we like to talk about are the aldehydes and uh, ketones uh, in organic chemistry. So um, it's very good at reducing aldehydes and ketones, uh, but what is actually more important, there are actually other groups that it will reduce. What's more important is actually to know what it doesn't reduce, um, and that is that it does not reduce esters, amides, and carboxylic acids. So that's really important is mostly, this is actually quite a weak reducing agent, and so esters, amides, and carboxylic acids are the uh, functional groups that it does not reduce. So as an example, this is just a, a fairly mundane one, but it just shows the selectivity that we get. Um, say, for instance, I have this aromatic compound. It has a methyl ester on it over there, and it has an aldehyde on this position over there. They're meta-related to each other. Uh, we use sodium borohydride as the reducing agent. And typically, by the way, this is uh, important now at this level to just connect reagents and solvents together a little bit. Um, typically, we do it in alcoholic solvents. So methanol is a very, very common uh, solvent that's added. We're going to see just now that it's not part of the reaction, but uh, it does have a small role to, uh, to play. Uh, and this reaction, it delivers this H minus, in the, you know, this idea of an H minus nucleophile, um, but it's going to leave the ester completely intact because sodium borohydride does not touch esters, uh, but the aldehyde gets reduced to the alcohol. Um, what we've effectively done is you see there's one H on this carbon over here. Now there are two H's over there. And so we're going to look at the mechanism to see exactly how that uh, that occurs. So let's just uh, have a quick look at, at this mechanism. It is relatively uh, complicated. Um, so I'm just going to do it in a very simple aldehyde, just to um, ethanol. Um, the, the reason it's complicated, not terribly so, is what is the nucleophile, is understanding what is the nucleophile in this reaction. Because sodium borohydride uh, looks like this in its lower structure. Uh, it's tetrahedral, uh, it has four uh, uh, hydrogens around it, and actually if you calculate its charge, it has a negative charge. And it's the fact that this negative charge, um, what that represents, makes the mechanism slightly more complicated. And the reason for that is that it's not a lone pair of electrons that, for instance, is on the boron, or a lone pair of electrons that's on one of those hydrogens. The negative charge is over the whole molecule. Um, what this is, in terms of it being a nucleophile, is a sigma bond that is a high energy. You've got four sigma bonds. It, they're all equal, so it doesn't really matter. But the nucleophile is a high energy sigma bond. And we can show the mechanism then. That means that the, the, the nucleophile, or the highest occupied molecular orbital, is coming from the sigma bond. We can choose any one of those. 
and we can show the arrow going from one of those to the carbon that is going to accept the uh, the electrons and then the pi bond breaks and so as a product we get the O which is now minus and we've added a new hydrogen over there now because we've added one hydrogen it's important to actually just show both of them don't leave out the other one because um, otherwise it looks like that carbon is missing a bond um, and we can just uh, highlight one of them to say that that's that's one that was uh, added across the bond over there um, and we therefore also have uh, this uh, BH3 remaining borane um, and we now need to uh, finish up now there's actually in terms of this mechanism there's uh, a number of uh, things that can happen and we can just simplify it technically what's going to happen is that this O minus is a lone pair of electrons is going to want to actually donate to the boron um, over there because it has this empty p orbital and we're going to form a new sigma bond um, over there um, so that's one path that can happen and, and it certainly uh, can and does happen in, in this reaction but we can simplify that because actually the next step is this O is going to pick up a proton um, and where it's going to pick up a proton is from the solvent remember I said to you that we actually dealing with um, methanol as a solvent so we have CH3O H uh, in as uh, in the medium um, so there's lots and lots of this because this is a solvent and this negative charge uh, the alkoxide the O minus can now pick up that H over there and of course if it's going to donate its electrons to this H over there H can only have one bond the proton so this bond over there has to break and the electrons are going to end up on the oxygen over there what we've effectively done is we just swapped partners so we've got an O minus over there this is basically ethanol um, or ethoxide um, and we've got methanol so we're just switching partners over there so the ethoxide could have added to the boron but the remaining methoxide can also add to the boron uh, it's not too big a deal to decide um, or, or worry about that it's not wrong to show this going on to the boron um, it's just simplifying the mechanism to show it in this one step uh, over here and so we end up with OH like that over there. We can draw in the two other H's. It's not necessary, but we'll draw them in to remind ourselves that this one came from the reducing agent. And we can highlight that one over there to say that that's the H that came from the solvent uh, in the end. All right. So this is the mechanism. That's the mechanism of uh, the addition of uh, sodium borohydride to, to an aldehyde. We can do it for ketones as well. Um, what's actually happening in terms of orbitals? Um, well, the way that we describe it, and this is what we're going to see, this typical description for all our uh, reactions of nucleophiles. So it's good just to, to get used to it. We're always going to end up drawing a CO uh, bond, uh, and we, we can make, we're going to be looking at the antibonding, so we can draw in the pi bond, because we're not too worried about that. Uh, and this one, we're going to draw, um, we're going to look at it from the side, on uh, it's ethanol this L this is the CH3 over there and we then draw in the antibonding orbitals and they're gonna look something like this over here we've seen that in some other videos and of course they are also going to be shaded in uh, to show the different phase so this that I've drawn over there is going to be for all nucleophiles adding to an aldehyde um, it's going to be this uh, antibonding orbital this is the luma so what we've drawn here is the pi star and we're going to always draw, write this in antibonding orbital pi star antibonding and it is the luma all right the nucleophile can now add to the carbon all right it's always going to add to the carbon because there's a slight positive charge over here versus a slightly negative charge over here and the nucleophile has a negative charge so it's going to be attracted to this carbon over there and I can either add from the bottom but I've run out of space at the bottom over here so I'm going to show it coming in from the top over there and what it looks like is it's a high energy sigma bond so it's a sigma bond all right it's a sigma bond that has the two electrons in it and they are going to want to overlap so I've drawn it over there and they're coming in at this trajectory that I've explained to you before of 107.5 degrees, the Bergy-Dunnett's uh, trajectory. 
And so I've got this nicely drawn up. That's the sigma bond. And the sigma bond represents a bond between an H and the boron. Uh, and I'm not going to draw any all the other molecular orbitals. I'm just drawing in this one over here just to give that impression of what's an indication of what's going on over there. So I can draw in the other three hydrogens. I'm just going to leave it like that. And this would be a good molecular orbital diagram. I just need to label this as the sigma bonding uh, orbital, which is acting as the HOMO, the highest occupied molecular orbital in there. And then this diagram is essentially complete. What's nice is I've shown that the sigma bonding orbital is unshaded, so it's the correct phase to this unshaded lobe over there, and they're all connecting and uh, we've done well. All right. So that was the sodium borohydride. Then the next one is a Grignard re uh, reaction. And the Grignard reagents that we're going to look at, are, in fact, I'm going to expand it a little bit more. Grignard reagents are normally something with a metal on it over there. There's some R group with a metal. And typically that metal is a magnesium bromide. So we would have something that looked like... Um, a phenyl group with a magnesium bromide on it, and this is typically your uh, Grignard reagent. This metal can also be something else. It could be a lithium. So, for instance, phenyl lithium is another typical fantastic nucleophile. These two are very, very similar to each other, and for, for your, your intents and purposes, we're just going to pretend they're exactly the same. So whether we've got a magnesium bromide or a lithium, and we're going to expand on this in some later lectures, um, these two are essentially the same. The key thing here is this bond that is between them. We have a carbon-metal bond, and the metal is much more electropositive than carbon, and it, that uh, for this reason, it makes that sigma bond that we have over there a very high energy sigma bond. And so when we take the, we make these sort of things and we react them with something. So uh, as an example, I'm just going to take uh, something rather silly. It's just butanone. And we're going to react it with any one of those. The mechanism would be exactly the same. It's from the high energy sigma bond. We're going to add to the carbon and break the pi bond like that over there. And what we get as an intermediate is the O minus, and we form that new bond to the phenyl group, which is, of course, the benzene ring, for those of you who might have forgotten. All right, so there's that new bond that's formed uh, between them. And, of course, the counter ion, the lithium, is now still present, and it can just be the counter ion to this O minus. Um, something which we're going to cover later on is the importance, and hopefully you remember from last year, is that to finish off this reaction, we are typically then going to add um, a weak acid, H+, which can then protonate that O-, and we will end up with our final product, which is the, the alcohol, um, and put the phenyl group on over there. All right, so that H+, is that one over there, and we still see the same bond that we had before. We're going to learn later on, and we need to... I'll just remind you now that these reagents cannot work in the presence of an acid. They will be killed and won't survive. Um, we can draw out this molecular orbital little diagram as we've done before. It's exactly the same thing. So what we do, in exactly the same as sodium borohydride, we just draw out our carbon and our two groups. In this case, we've got a CH3. In this case over there, I'll just draw, there's the CH2 and there's a CH3. So that's the um, ethyl group of the butanone. And we draw in our orbitals. There, 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 there. Shaded. Doesn't matter which side you shade. Just remember that the most important thing we're going to, is that when we add our nucleophile, we must have the same phase. Um, so if you're doing it on a shaded one, you must shade it in and as, uh, as well. In fact, let me do that on this one that's uh, below this. So this is the pi star. It is the LUMO. And what's going to react over there is a sigma bonding orbital with two electrons in it. It needs to have the same phase over there. So this one's also going to be shaded in. And um, it's going to be, uh, in this case, we were using the lithium over there. And on this side, it's the phenyl ring. You could draw in the whole benzene ring, but it's okay. And so that is interacting. So 
What is this orbital? It's a sigma orbital, which is acting as the HOMO, the highest occupied molecular orbital. All right, so that would be the molecular orbital diagram to describe this uh, interaction for um, an organometallic, either Grignard reagent or an organolithium uh, reagent. All right.